I hope you all enjoyed your meal as much as I did. I hope you all enjoyed your table uh, company as much as I did. And I hope you had a chance to visit outside with more than just the people at your table. Um, if I may, the highlight of our program, may I direct your attention to the screen where we will have a short video uh, featuring some of the scholars and work of our award recipients tonight. It's time for lessons to begin. Not in a classroom, but in this open-air amphitheater in the Turkish capital. It's the only way these students can continue their studies after hundreds of academics were sacked from universities following a failed coup attempt last July. I felt anger, a healthy anger that did me good because we were sacked unjustly in an illegal way without any real reason. It shows that the terrifying suppression of any democratic or leftist opposition will continue. Dr. Jelenk lost her job at the beginning of January after signing a petition calling for peace between Turkey and the Kurds. She's one of around 100,000 people, including teachers, journalists and civil servants, who have been fired or suspended since the coup attempt. Now, Dr. Jelenk teaches in the park for free. And despite the bitter winter weather, her students are determined to attend. They've taken away our right to an education, to learn. It's a terrifying process. It's like pouring concrete on our school. But we're still confident of one thing. Our teachers will all come back. Our professor has taught us that hope is a political thought. The outdoor classes are one way to beat the system. But anger is also rising and protests like this one in Istanbul are becoming more frequent. They're practically trying to empty the universities and we're trying as far as possible to fight and to publicize this, to look into the legality of all this. Sooner or later we will return to our institutions. The universities do not belong to the AK party, they belong to the people. For now, the government continues its purge. But many of Turkey's students and academics say they won't give up the fight until they're back in their classrooms where they belong. Before I call up our board chair, Kate Stimson, and our recipients tonight, I want to recognize the many of our community who cannot be with us, the many wrongly detained scholars and students around the world whose struggles embody the spirit of this award. These include Amadreza Jalali, a scholar of disaster medicine currently imprisoned and sentenced to death in Iran. These include Shi Yo Ye Wang, at Princeton a Princeton University PhD history student serving a 10 year prison sentence also in Iran. And this includes Pai Bunpatar Raksa, a law student at Khon Kien University in Thailand who's serving a two and a half year prison sentence for sharing an article on Facebook. The many scholars, and, and as well, the many scholars and students detained in Egypt who we recognized in 2016 with our award, as well as in Venezuela, Ethiopia, and of course, Turkey. I invite you all to visit the Scholars at Rift booth in the Activity Expo tomorrow, where if you wish, you can sign letters on behalf of all of these cases as part of our advocacy work. And I tell you from my personal experience speaking to many, many scholars and students who have been released, every letter and signature helps make the case, make sure that their cases are not forgotten. And so now it is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Catherine Stimson, the Scholars at Risk Board Chair, to make the presentation of our Courage to Think Award. Uh, Thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't ask us to thank Rob Quinn for 18 years of extraordinary leadership. I would call it talent in action. So I think a round of applause for our Rob Quinn. I 
I also want to say I've been thrilled to see little children in the audience tonight. And I want to say to the parents of the little children, they are beautifully behaved. And I know you are raising them to be warriors for justice as well. Uh, it is a great honor, indeed a humbling honor, to present this award on behalf of the SAR board, but on behalf of the entire SAR network. It is a joint decision. Can I take just a moment to remind you of what this award represents? It recognizes outstanding dedication, often in the teeth of great danger, to the protection of scholars and the promotion of that freedom we hold so dear, academic freedom. So who, to whom do we give this award? We can give it to individuals or to groups. We can give it to people who experience threats personally. We can give it to those who have worked to assist them. We can give it to those who work like everybody in this room does to promote wider understanding of and respect for academic freedom, the freedom to think, and the freedom to hope for thought. In the past, recipients have included R.A. Nair, the great R.A. Nair, that human rights leader and former president of the Open Society Foundations. In 2014, you awarded it to Dean Habib Kazdagli of Manabu University in Tunisia for defending his university from the violence that followed the Arab Spring. And then in Montreal, in 2016, you decided to award it to the over 600 wrongfully imprisoned scholars and students, students in Egypt. So we're presenting the award here tonight in 2018 so that we can celebrate together in a spirit of extraordinary gratitude for the con uh, contributions of this year's recipients. But first, the network and others gave us many outstanding nominees for this award, including one, oh, I don't know how he feels about being a runner up, but he deserves our gratitude too. So one who is with us tonight Omar Mohammed, the historian and citizen journalist behind the human rights blog, Mosul Eye, through which he documented, you will remember, life in Mosul, the gritty, grim life in Mosul under the Islamic State. And at grave personal risk, Omar began anonymously documenting daily life in Mosul in June 2014, when the Islamic State took over the city. And during this period, Mosul Eye was regarded by many, and many in the international media, for being one of the few independent, reliable sources about Mosuls, showing in a terribly dark moment in his city's history that the light was not extinguished. Today, he writes about the city's renaissance. He runs a campaign for the rebuilding of its historic libraries. So Omar, Omar, we commend you so much for using your skills as a historian to stand up against violence and tyranny and for the rebirth to the historic city of Mosul its people and its libraries. Omar, would you please stand so we can thank you?
Our award recipients tonight are not one courageous individual, but many who, like Omar, are using their skills as researchers, as writers, as teachers, as people of the mind, as people of consciousness to resist a dark moment. In their case, a dark moment in the history of Turkish higher education. And in doing so, they are an embodiment of the responsibility to explain and to defend higher education and democratic values. It is no accident that the theme of this Congress is the university and the future of democracy. I think you all know the history of Academics for Peace. It started as a simple petition of the kind probably everybody in this room has signed at one point or another. It was published in January 2016 and it was initially co-signed by over 1,100 academics inside Turkey. And they were expressing their concern, their personal and their professional concern about a matter of grave public interest. That was the ongoing tensions and violence in the country's southeast region. But what turned a petition from a normal expression of opinion into a watershed moment was the reaction of the authorities. In response to the petition, the authorities initiated investigations, dismissals, arrests and prosecutions of thousands of scholars and students and journalists as well. And these increased even more after an alleged coup attempt in July 2016. And to date, at least 5,800 scholars and students have been, have been targeted. But this is not only why we recognize them tonight. In addition, it is the response of the Academics for Peace community that has transformed this dark moment into a shining example, worthy of our recognition, worthy of our admiration, worthy of our gratitude, and I might add, worthy of our emulation. In the face of extraordinary pressures, academic, Academics for Peace members have stood strong. They have shown courage and dedication. They have organized, and you all know what it, you all know what it takes to organize. They have arranged lawyers. They have rallied at court hearings. They have provided urgent financial support for the many who have lost their academic positions and their passports. And they have comforted those for whom the pressures have become almost unbearable. And they have also rallied the international higher education community. They have challenged us not to remain silent to these unprecedented attacks on higher education and academic freedom. But most of us in international higher education have some ties to Turkish higher education. These are our colleagues. These are our partner institutions. These are our friends. And even as we struggle to find constructive responses commensurate to the scale of events, we are so grateful to our Academics for Peace colleagues for reminding us of our own values. So it is my great privilege, again on behalf of the SAR board, on behalf of all of us in the networks and people in this room, to present this award to Academics for Peace. We have two representatives who are going to receive the award on behalf of Academic for Peace. I am going to call them to the podium. And when they are here standing with me, I will tell you a little bit more about them. They will speak and then they will actually receive the award. So may I please call to the podium 
Du Safer Kaya and Tibesim Yilmaz. Musafer, you were born in Istanbul in 1973. You completed your graduate program in political science. You got a PhD at the Ataturk Institute for Modern Turkey in Istanbul in 2013. You lectured and help me with this. I've never pronounced it correctly. Bagasici. You see, I've never pronounced it correctly and I didn't again tonight. <laughs> He is specializing in urban sociology and social movements in modern Turkey. He also has experience designing and teaching courses on the history of the late Ottoman Empire in modern Turkey. You have been a social science scholar before you were discharged for signing the peace petition. At the moment, you are a fellow of the Frederick Ebert Foundation in the Center for Metropolitan Studies at TU Berlin and a member of Academics for Peace, Germany initiatives. To Bessem, you are a feminist activist and a political scientist based in Germany. Yeah, sister. <laughs> Currently, as I understand it, re recommencing your doctoral studies at the Department of Diversity and Social Conflict in Humboldt University of Berlin. And your research interests include Kurdish studies, critical gender studies, visual sociology, and the multidirectionality of memory. You're an active member of many organizations, including Academics for Peace Turkey, and the Women's Initiative for Peace and the Solidarity Network for Detained Students. I may have mispronounced the name of an important university. I hope I have given you some sense of these two brave and extraordinary people who will now speak to us and then the formal reading of the citation. So, may I give you their voices, not mine. Dear colleagues and friends, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Tonight, my colleague Muzaffer and I are accepting an award called Courage to Think on behalf of our many, many other co-petitioners who dare to say we will not be a party to this crime. Though I wish there were no need to honor someone's courage to think freely and speak out about it. So far, 265 of us are subject to judicial proceedings for spreading terrorist propaganda. 12 colleagues have been sentenced to 15 months in prison with a five year of suspension of the sentence. Another colleague, Professor Füsun Üstel at Galatasaray University was also sentenced to 15 months, but she wasn't granted a sentence suspension. Professor on Onur Hamzoğlu, who was dismissed from Kocaeli University by a decree law, has been in prison for the last 68 days. Despite the smear campaigns and right violations towards the signatories, our aim remains the same, promoting peace. And that is the driving power of our resistance and solidarity. While our rights have been violated by the Turkish state, we refuse to be seen as victims and demand recognition of our subjectivities. We believe that we are neither entitled to our academic titles nor university affiliations for critical thinking. We are everywhere, keeping up with our academic work, supporting each other by all means and seeking for non-hierarchical forms of knowledge production. 
thousands of people of all age, class backgrounds, and genders have engaged with Solidarity Academies all around Turkey, and now, recently, also in Berlin. Our voice is getting stronger and stronger with the support of our colleagues, students, friends, labor unions, and international community. Many wonderful people have crossed our path during this journey, and there are many, many people to thank. I wish there hadn't, there hadn't been reasons to start our petition, yet there were and they remain until this day. Our petition is not only about the subsequent repression we face, but was and continues to be called against state violence towards Kurds in Turkey. That's why we would like to dedicate this award to one person in particular, Ayşe Çelik. Çelik is a teacher who recently was sentenced to 15 months in prison for allegedly spreading terrorist propaganda. Since last Friday, she's in prison with her eight-month-old baby. During the Turkish government's so-called security operations in Baku, also known as Turkish Kurdistan, in 2016, Ayşe Çelik said the following words in a, te uh, in a popular television program. Quoted, Are you aware of what's going on in this country's east? What's happening here is misrepresented on television. Don't stay silent. Please show more sensitivity as human beings. See us, hear us, and give us a hand. I would like to address the teachers who have abandoned their students. How are they going to return here? How are they going to look those innocent children in the eye? What a pity. Don't let people die. Don't let children die. Don't let mothers cry. Ayşe Çelik is one of the many people who couldn't remain silent about what has been going on, and therefore, if this is a crime, we all have committed the same crime. As Academics for Peace, we are in solidarity with Ayşe Çelik, and this award is dedicated to her and her baby Deran Çelik. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a big honor for us to get this award. And um, I would like to say uh, two years ago, when I was in prison, uh, the one thing, the most important thing that encouraged me uh, to, to have the opportunity to, to make people heard our voice. We had chance to make people to heard our voice we, we, we have opportunity to reach people outside the prison's walls. But unfortunately for our students, and their number is about now uh, 70,000, they are uh, the, the, the detained students, the students in prisons, uh, are, their number is about 70,000 uh, uh, for now. And they, they, their voices is not, uh, it is hard, it is not easy for them to reach the people um, in, in the state of emergency rule in Turkey. So I just would like to read a letter from the Boğaziçi University students uh, and they uh, arrested uh, just because of they are against the war, they were against the occupation of Turkish state uh, Kurdistan of Afrin, so uh, they, like us, they are uh, charged for being traitors and terrorists, and now they are in prison. Uh, so I, I just would like to read you their public letter uh, and try to uh, reach their voice to you. The statement of the detained students to the public and constituents of Boğaziçi University. After two weeks in detention and several days after being formally arrested, we now have the opportunity to make our voice heard. This letter is our response to the academics who demand our freedom worldwide, our professors at university, human rights activists, journalists, and our friends. The current government creates a belligerent environment that it continues to exacerbate as it subdues Oppos oppos oppositional voices with violence and torture. Those in power appoint 
trustees as administrators to the universities where the opposition is strong. Academics who demand peace and academic who demands peace and university students are unlawfully being tried to court and imprisoned. Today, 13 students at Boaz University are deprived of their right to education. We know that this harsh attack against us and our university is linked to the political situation. As the country grows ungovernable, the government shifts the political focus by inciting wars and fabricating terrorists in order to overcome this crisis. We have opposed these repressive policies against our university from the beginning. And we are firm in our decision that we will not leave academia. We do not accept the statement of the trust directorate by any means, which openly supports the surveillance on campus and targets the university own students. We demand the removal of this unlawful statement from the official website of Boaz University. We reiterate the commitments that were the cause of our arrest from the dormitories, libraries, and campuses. We are against weapons, against the bombing of cities, against the fatalities, and against the forced removal of the hundreds of thousands of people to from, from their homes. We will not take part in this crime by being silent. We will not resign in face of chauvinism and belligerence. We are not frightened or discouraged by the repression unleashed upon Boaz University and its students. We will fulfill our historical responsibility by furthering our struggle while we remain inside prison walls. We call on you to advance our struggle on the outside. The arrested woman from Boaz University. I think after hearing these two voices and that third voice redoubles our faith in the award we have made and redoubles our efforts in the future. And now I'd like to call up fellow members of the SAR board to help to stand with us as we read the citation and we formally present the award. So could I welcome Don Stanton, Irv Epstein, Rosalie Wolf, Jackie Baba, get up here, please, <laughs> and Beth Greenwood, past member of the board. <laughs> Beth, where are you? The citation, which again is the choice of the network, as well as SAR, the citation reads, the 2018 Scholars at Risk Network Courage to Think Award is presented to Academics for Peace Turkey for extraordinary efforts in building academic solidarity and in promoting the principles of academic freedom freedom of inquiry, and the peaceful exchange of ideas. And this word is not on the formal citation, but let me take the liberty of adding the word courage. Rob, present the award.
and before we adjourn, I, I have to say, um, in my experience in working in this work, I have never met a group of scholars who are more organized uh, and who are more uh, sharing and respectful of each other. So we have many other Academics for Peace signatories in the room, and I invite you, if you would like, to come up for a photo. If you have family or guests, they are welcome to come with you. So please, anyone who would like to be in the picture. Thank you, thank you, Academics for Peace. If you will permit me, I just was reminded and I want to share when I had the chance to visit at the Istanbul Courthouse when four of the original scholars being prosecuted were being detained and hundreds of their colleagues squeezed into the courtroom to witness this injustice. Um, one of our colleagues had the courage, one of our Academics for Peace colleagues had the courage when he made his statement to the judge on his innocence to say, as a professor, I am, I am compelled to grade the prosecution's indictment, uh, gave it a failing grade, and then proceeded to point out all the factual errors in the indictment itself while facing prosecution. So that is the level both commitment to scholarship uh, and the courage that this community has. So thank you, thank you, Academics for Peace. And thank you, thank you, thank you all for everything that you do and for a really, really rich and informative day and for what I know was sharing a really inspiring night that reminds us again why we're doing all of this. Um, now the bad news, although the good news too because there's more work to do. We'll resume tomorrow at the Henry Ford Building. Coffee will be available at 8. The program will begin sharply, sharply at 9 uh, with a plenary discussion on the situation in Turkey. Okay, so there will be a really important plenary discussion. You won't want to miss it. Uh, for tonight, coffee and dessert will be available in the antechamber where you got your meal earlier. Coaches to the co uh, conference hotels will be leaving from 9.30 until 10.30, okay? Thank you all and have a lovely, lovely evening.